Ah, oh, hey everybody, it's a forecast you're here reporting in with an update on the Ebola situation and what we see coming forward in the next few weeks and months on the Ebola situation. Um, we predicted, we, we got on forecasting on this thing uh, back in July before most people were even talking about it. And even back then we said the direction this thing's headed in, unless drastic measures are taken, unless the West gets involved in a huge way, in an overwhelming way, um, and unless very drastic measures were taken, we said that this thing would go pandemic and it would grow very rapidly. And that's in fact what has happened. Um, the drastic measures we talked about are only partially being implemented, not fully. Uh, these include uh, mass quarantines of suspected areas and people that have uh, e e Ebola uh, and, and also travel shutdowns. And they've only shut down the travel partly. Uh, we wanna, it's just now come to light that some other um, uh, very high level um, pandemic and biomedical type forecasting people and organizations have now come in and basically echoed a similar sentiment that we made back in July. Uh, you can see on NPR's website here, we're looking at a, a forecast of now uh, geometric type growth uh, of, of uh, cases. This is caseload of Ebola. Today is, by the way, Friday, February, the, uh, Friday, September the 19th, 2000. And uh, 14 is the year. And um, so this, this article on NPR, uh, their website, uh, about this thing going pretty much exponential. This is from Columbia University, Columbia Prediction of Infection Diseases. Um, we see quite a few other similar uh, predictions where this thing kind of goes geometric or exponential type growth. Uh, so it's, it's no longer linear. It, it's no longer you know, uh, 100 new cases a day of sick people. Um, we're, we're looking at where it approximately on caseloads, the infection right here, the infection, the, 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 uh, the time to uh, where it incubates is two to three weeks. So it's about 14 to 21 days. In that time, it's a roughly doubling the cases. Uh, we're now in late September at 5,000 cases approximately. About a month ago, it was 2,500 cases or so. It's, it's just about doubled per. Um, now, they're hoping that with um, a variety of drastic measures, they can slow it down, and hopefully they get this, this vaccine thing working here at the end of the year. I think that's the best course of action here right now. They do what they can do to contain this thing and quarantine and isolate it, and then hopefully they get the vaccine working uh, to really put the kibosh on this thing. There's a chart on Science Insider here. A, a researcher named Alessandro Vespignani, uh, sorry about um, not getting the name right, projects close to 10,000 cases by September 24. Well, yeah, the, the middle of this projection, uh, the lower numbers are at, at 5,000, and that's where we're, we're at right now. We're about September, so this is, this is five days from now. It can still jump to probably 6,000 cases by September 24. So he's, he's pretty close as far as the ballpark. Um, Another forecaster here, Doug Robbins, Blogspot, has made similar geometric type predictions where he's basically said, if this thing, if you extrapolate this thing out over like a year, like wh where does it go? You know, um, here's, he said like, well, how do you extrapolate, it, where, where would you get to a million cases if this thing is really out of control? A lot of it depends on what's called the R value, which is basically the rate at which the disease is spreading. So if you're looking at some of these models, you want to look at what's called the R value. That, that can swing the, 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 the numbers dramatically. Um, an R of 1 means basically that it's a steady state. It's not growing. It's not shrinking. They're not containing it. Uh, to contain it, the, the R value has to be, I believe, less than, less than 1. So it's going to be like you know, 0.7 or something like that. That's the rate which is shrinking. Um, so basically, the, those are the... Um, so this is DougRobbins.blogspot.com. He's got an interesting... Uh, analysis on what his projections are um, on on this thing. So these these people are starting to come out with more stark and dire forecasts. There's a lot of people denying that it can come to the West. That is an Africa problem. If you look at the map, I mean, there's nothing really that's going to stop it once it gets to shoots through Africa. There's nothing really that's going to stop it from say going to uh, the Middle East. And, and then zipping up to Europe, and and easily jump the shark in the United States and and, and uh, you know North North and South America. 
Um, so this, this thing, we really do think is going to be a pandemic problem. And most of what we can do right now is contain it the best we can and then try to get the vaccine. We see those as really the solutions for it at this point. Um, and hopefully they can get the vaccine working. This is quite a scary video if you watch it about how infection might spread uh, pandemically. It's, it's a model. And it's a, uh, based on a math model by a researcher named Mr. Uh, Dr. Bar Yam, um, who did some high-level research as far as disease modeling and pandemic modeling. So uh, Dr. Bar Yam, uh, B-A-R-Y-M, you should check out their research um, and, and what could happen. So that's, that's pretty heavy stuff. It's kind of a scary video to watch the uh, red spots moving out. Um, so yeah, a, a lot of stark information, and uh, a lot of people are still kind of denying that it could come to the United States, and I, I think that's very wishful thinking. Um, we, they, they are not really um, being totally um, candid with us, I don't think, uh, on, on this thing. Yeah, the Liberian president warns global could become a global crisis. That's, that's spot on. Yeah, it, it can easily shoot out of Africa in, in spite of their best efforts to contain it. So um, definitely check out those things, and, and again, main thing is check out some of these um, these high-level disease researchers um, that are, are doing, uh, this is an interesting article, scientists who identified Ebola calls for a quasi-military intervention. About a week, I, I, it wasn't even a week after this article came out that the U.S. then announced it would be sending troops into Africa, into Liberia. That's how serious this is, and that's how much gravity these kind of people hold. Again, this is, this is a high-level guy. He was the original scientist that identified Ebola back in the 70s, Professor Phil Piot. And, and he said, has urged David Cameron to support a quasi-military intervention. Okay, he said, so this is an article on yeah, that fateful day, September 11th. And then the next week, we get an announcement um, you know, Tom Friedman from the CDC is talking to Obama, and Obama, like, like within a week after this article comes out, or this, this announcement is made, in the quasi military, we have U.S. troops in Africa, 3,000 of them going in. So this guy holds a lot of sway. Some of these high-level researchers, what they say can hold massive amounts of sway. So you should check out um, some of the other high-level forecasts on this thing and what it's going to take to contain it. It's pretty serious stuff. Um, we believe basically, again, it's going to continue to go pandemic. Um, at this point, we, basically we can, what we can do is try to um, quarantine it and isolate it. I don't think they've got the political backbone to do the really painful things, the real quarantines that are needed. So it's just going to slow down the spread. Hopefully we'll get the, the vaccine going. But um, try to get your preps ready because these quarantines may not be limited to countries in Africa. When it gets to the United States, it could be a tough situation if they tell you to shelter in place in your own home. And uh, hopefully you got enough food, water, uh, self-defense products in case there's looting. It could be a real heck of a situation. Stay safe, everybody.